help me, O Lord, to explain what is necessary from the Holy Spirit, the message that will come for us at home in our hearts, that we may be able to apply and be encouraged and go out uplifted, encouraged and obedient to your word, bringing great change and transformation in our lives and the lives of many. So we thank you, Lord, for speaking to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let me remind you that we have been uh, studying from the book of Acts, the great things the Holy Spirit has been doing through apostles. Uh, now, although we have not finished uh, book of Acts, but uh, we will uh, finish it up to chapter 22 today, and then we will enter into Christmas time, and maybe some other time we can go back to the rest of the chapter of uh, Book of Acts. But then for next year, we will be having hopeful and encouragement, uh, encouraging words from the Book of Isaiah, beginning from chapter 14. Well, um, we had our lovely holidays of one week uh, when Esther and I celebrated our wedding anniversary. And we went to Dover and then to Calais. Uh, it was adventurous. Mm -hmm. And I would say behind every successful man, there is a successful wife. Uh, and in fact, that was mostly Esther's idea to adventure out to Calais. And would you believe that God's favor was upon us? Premier Inn, where we stayed for two days, of course, we extended another day. Three days we stayed there, but we initially booked for two days. And uh, the lady gave us a room, which was small. We went and saw, and immediately Esther said, no, I'm not having this room, small room. I'm going to have a bigger room. Although I was quite okay. Yeah, that's all right. But we went to reception and the lady, we said, can we have bigger room, please? Uh, because, and I said uh, politely that we are celebrating our wedding anniversary here. Uh, oh, yeah. Would you like to have a sea view? And we said, yes, please. And she actually saw if the place is available. She gave us a bigger room with sea views. And I say, one more thing. We'll give you two morning breakfast, English breakfast, continental, completely free. Oh. So that was God's favor. And it was adventurous for us to take our car into P and O uh, ferry to Calais. And it was, would you believe, first time experience to drive from the right side. Um, and uh, first time, I think she admired before as well, but Esther admired my driving first time with lavishly because I was you know, calm. But while returning, we lost the navigation uh, and, and the connection, Wi-Fi connection even. Uh, but we asked the local people. They were so gracious. They were have helpful. And uh, we found our way. For, first, we actually landed up in the train uh, train area, the, you know, the, what do you call it? Train station. And the lady said, you are in the wrong place. She helped us to get the exit uh, ticket and then we came out and finally we arrived and we came back safely to Dover. So God's hand has been upon us. I tell you, um, when we are pushed into the situation, we can stay calm and stand up for Jesus. When a group of tourists visited a crocodile farm, the owner of the place launched a daring proposal. Whoever dares to jump, swim, and to shore and survive, I'll give one million dollars or pounds, whatever you can say. Nobody dared to move. Suddenly a man jumped into the water and desperately swam towards the shore. 
while he was chased by all the crocodiles. With great luck, he arrived, taking the admir admiration of everyone in the place. Then the owner announced, we have a brave winner. After collecting their reward, the couple returned to the hotel. Upon arrival, the man manager told him he was very brave to jump. Then the man said, I didn't jump. Someone pushed me. His wife smiled. <laughs> the moral is behind every successful man, there is a woman who pushes him. So sometimes the Lord also pushes you, the people pushes you, you know, but you go for your adventure. And when we are knocked down, we're discouraged. At least what we can do is to kneel down and pray. And then we will get, get up and stand in the strength of the Lord. So stand up for Jesus. Keeping faith in our hard times can be extremely difficult. But that's where we are tested. We are prepared to go to our higher level. And maybe God is training us and preparing us for a greater faith. Taking us to higher level of knowing who he is and what God is planning in your life. That our strength is not upon our wisdom, and our own abilities, on our strategies and plans, but on the Lord. Because when we, uh, Apostle Paul says that, stand in the strength of the Lord. Stand in the Lord. And right now, i like to do one thing. May I encourage everyone who is especially struggling to stand because of sickness, because of uh, troubles in their life, financial crisis, or anyone can stand and shall we all pray for them. Anyone who's struggling to stand in whatever ways, we'll pray, we're going to pray for you. Or maybe we are all of us, so we all can stand. Some other way, we all can stand and find the spiritual standing of faith in Jesus Christ. So, I'd like to pray for all of you. Father God, I pray at this time for everyone, including me, who sometimes find struggle to stand because of our sickness, because of our uh, hopeless situation, because of finance, and because of injustice, and uh, many other reasons, especially standing up uh, having hope in this time of uncertainties when there is an economic crisis, there is a, a problem of fuel and, and a heating problem, heating crisis and food crisis. We as the people of God have hope and we are going to stand firm. We are going to be on our knees, but we are going to stand firm in prayer as the people of God in this church in New Hope. And we're going to witness and bring hope in the community. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So you all are standing in uh, the presence of God and in the strength of God. So it's very, very important for us to stand. Paul was bruised and he was uh, full of pain. But first of all, Paul was lifted up by the soldiers. And God is going to lift you up by even your enemies. And we hear the testimony of Rina that, you know, in the workplace, the, the Lord will lift you up, give you promotion and encouragement from unknown places. Those people who do not know you, strangers will come and show kindness. So first of all, God will lift you up. And when you are there in the place where you're lifted up in the spirit, like Paul would able to stand and he, he, although he was still having pain and full of blood, but he was able to stand in the strength of the Lord. And I believe 
although the scripture doesn't say at the moment this in this passage but Paul was full of the Holy Spirit and that's why he was able to say that when I am weak I am strong in the Lord I found many times one or two times I at least realized that when I found opposition in Bristol I was actually giving out tracks to people one young a white man came and punched me uh, I was completely all right and I was somehow found special strength of the Lord and kept on saying that, that and his friend was telling to go away and take you know he was taking him away and I was looking at him and saying Jesus loves you Jesus loves you what I don't know from where that courage came and strength came but in that weakness, God can give you yes. his strength. His grace is sufficient for you. That's what Paul actually experienced. And he was able to stand firm. And the first thing, what he did was, he spoke in uh, Greek, of course, so that uh, the soldiers could understand and say, oh, I, are you not a terrorist? I thought you were a terrorist because there, there's someone actually was leading the you know so many people to destroy the temple oh you're something different and now they recognize paul is something different when you speak up for yourself then people will know who you are and so he was able to speak different languages he, he could speak uh, greek aramaic and hebrew he was learned person and so we can use our little language that we can use in missionary when they go to different countries they learn their language so they can win souls for jesus christ and uh, by god's grace i knew number of uh, languages of india especially um, and when i meet someone and say something a word in their own language they connect they see that i love them and we are able to talk to them so if you are not able to know all the language, please learn one or two languages of your neighbors. If you find, tell me how do you say hello, or so on and on. So you can win. So he used the language for speaking his uh, testimony. And now he was when actually he said, "Can I have, can I have chance to speak for these uh, Jewish people?" And he loved them, even though he was in pain. But he loved them. He said, I am one among them. I understand what they are coming from. So jealous for their law and for the religion. I used to persecute people. And I, I was just like them. I know where they stand, where they come from. And so I am one among them. But my life has changed. He told the story, his shared testimony. In which language? Aramaic. You see? Aramaic was the language spoken by Jesus. And uh, Aramaic is not spoken so well, but there is a particular village. They're still keeping it, this language alive because uh, they say that uh, Aramaic language is such a pure and wonderful language. Jesus spoke and there are one or two uh, books of the Bibles are written in Aramaic. For example, Daniel. Uh, other one I'm trying to remember. So, um, but Jesus spoke in Aramaic. And Aramaic was the language that was not actually official language, but the Hebrew people could relate. And they were all quiet. Spellbound. Listening to every word. Till he spoke about how God called him to Gentiles. And they they still were able to, uh, you know, show opposition. Now, the four things that they accused, um, accused Paul. One thing is, he, you know, they said that Paul is against the Jewish people. But Paul, in his testimony, says, I am one among you. I am part of you, but I'm changed. They actually accused him uh, that he is against the law of Moses. And Paul says that he is well educated under the, under the Gamaliel. 
the leading rabbi of that time. And they accused him against the temple, that he is against the temple, a religious ceremony. Paul said that I am jealous just like you. I am one among them. And then they said, you are against the purity or holiness of the temple. You brought Gentiles in. But Paul says that even I persuaded Christians, but I found the light. Your testimony is powerful. Some of you think, oh, my testimony is not so dramatic like Paul. You know, my testimony is also not very dramatic. I was actually, my parents were Hindus. But I became Christian in a Christian family, first generation Christian. As the age of 12, I gave my life to the Lord and was baptized. Later on in college, I was baptized with the Holy Spirit. I was feeling like I'm walking on the moon. Peaceful, joyful, and giving testimony and sharing about Jesus was so natural for me. And ever since, it has been so natural for me. God opened the door. And when I was traveling in the train or bus, I was sharing as though I was talking about my, uh, uh, my favorite football player or, or politics. I'm just naturally, this will happen when you are filled with the Holy Spirit. And I tell you, for Paul, the gospel, the good news of Jesus was the most important thing in this world. For Paul, the good news of Jesus was the only hope in this world. And that is true even today. Do you believe that? Yes. If you believe that, your life will be not the same. Your life will be transformed and revolutionized that you will see that Jesus is the only hope, ultimate hope for the world. And Paul was, and apostles were, willing to die for this gospel. People are willing to die for this gospel of Jesus Christ. When Paul met, he said, and when Jesus spoke to Paul, he said, who are you, Lord? He addressed him as Lord. Before that, he thought Jesus was just an ordinary man. And the second question Paul asked, What should I do, Lord? Every people who come to know the Lord should ask these two important questions. Who is Jesus? And what should I do for him? And that should lead us to mission. Many Christians know who Jesus is somehow, but they do not, and they are not involved in mission. They have more pu no purpose in life. They are not sharing the gospel. And that's why people are not coming to know the Lord. That's why there is a decline in the church. Everyone should be involved. So Jesus said, I am the, the uh, Jesus of Nazareth, because Jesus was common name. Plus, uh, Jesus should be called Nazarene, anointed one, Messiah. And so he identified himself. But Jesus is the living one. Paul met not only on Damascus Road, but second time he met in the temple of Jerusalem. Oh, would you believe that? The Jewish people say, oh, Jesus, he met in the temple in Jerusalem. And he gave a mission for him to go out to the Gentiles. And he said, uh, please don't stay in Jerusalem because the people are opposing you. And so go out in the far places where you are called to disciple others. He was so much uh, uh, full of passion to reach out to Jewish people. But God called him. Sometimes we want to stay in one place and comfortable place. I'm good doing this one. But sometimes God can give us adventurous life. He can say he can give you impossible tasks to do. He can ask you to reach out to your neighbors. Sometimes he can ask you to go out to the marketplaces. And sometimes you reach out to people who you do not know them, people from different nationalities. You don't know, you don't know their culture, their language, the way they speak. But yes, just say hello to them and you will find they'll be so kind to you. 
so loving to you. And that would be an opening. So God can call you in all unexpected places. But God's Holy Spirit will be with you and do great things for you. So your testimony is powerful. But it's important for us when we are in a vulnerable situation, difficult situation, to exercise our rights. Stand up and speak up for justice. We Christians are supposed to speak for justice. For the poor people, for the exploitation, for the refugees. And so Paul was able to say, I am Roman. And the, the, the soldier or commander asked, are you sure that you are a Roman citizen? Say, yes, because I had to pay a lot of price to pay to get the Roman citizenship. But he said, I'm actually born as a Roman. Probably scholars would say that his parents did something great to get the award as, as a Roman citizen. And so he was born into a Roman family. So exercise your rights. In this country, we have freedom to preach the gospel. We can stand anywhere, knock the door, and speak out about Jesus. There's so many countries. You know, places like India, they are actually uh, persecuted. In Africa, in many other countries, uh, Indonesia, and Muslim countries, people are persecuted for their faith. We can meet here like this in freedom and worship God. Hallelujah. Why don't we just take, use our freedom to glorify and see this nation come back to God. Hallelujah. So speak for justice. And that's what he said. And then um, he went to the higher place. Now Roman citizens just look at how they were privileged people. So Paul, according to Roman law, if you are a Roman prisoner, you could not um, have, you know, keep be executed, beaten, tortured, or put in prison without a public hearing. And so there was a great advantage of uh, preaching the gospel and using the rights. You and I have lots of rights and privileges to preach the gospel, to pray. So passport is a privilege. But more than that, more encouragement for you, for you and me, we are the citizens of heaven. We have passport of heaven, where it says, I, Jesus Christ, shed my blood for this person, he is a born-again believer. He is entitled to live in the kingdom of God in heaven. Hallelujah. We are not of this world. We are just passing through. We live like we are citizens of heaven. Hallelujah. We are walking and talking. We have the passport of heaven. We are going to see Jesus face to face. Hallelujah. So... That's why we need to step up for a higher call. We should not stay and settle where we are. We should reach out for the higher call. And what, what, what's happening in Paul's life was, Paul never actually planned. Actually, he was thinking to go to Rome. But he didn't know that he would go through difficulties and problems. Your difficulties and problem and pain has a purpose to take you to a higher level. And now Paul was actually was able to get justice by hearing from the Sanhedrin, uh, the, the council of uh, people, uh, of Jewish people in verse 30. And um, then he was going to speak to kings and governors. And he was, he was being elevated to the higher way of giving testimony. Probably, in most cases, you have gone through all those challenges and difficulties in your life and suffering and sickness to take you to the higher level. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're going to be greater a testimony, powerful testimony. God is going to use you. And in this time of setbacks, is a setting up for Jesus, for the higher call. 
So God has called you and me. And so let's rejoice in God that uh, God has called us for a mission that is higher. God has called New Hope uh, for a special mission. So let's speak for Jesus, speak for justice, and also step up for higher call. Now we have opportunities of our lifetime. I know God has called me to New Hope for a higher purpose. We're going to see more of signs and wonders in this place. God is raising the level of our faith and we're going to see souls being saved. I'm declaring and praying that God is going to bring young people, children. I'm declaring and believing that this place will be filled with the glory of God, of people who will be rejoicing and praising God. Do not give up. The message is, do not give up. Stand up for Jesus. Speak for justice. And step up for the higher call God has called you. May God bless us with these words. As Paul says, in my suffering for you and, 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 and fill up with, in my flesh what is lacking in affliction of Christ for the sake of the church to fulfill the word of God, the mystery which has been hidden, but now reveal his saints to them God will to make known the mystery among the Gentiles. New hope has a purpose. New hope has a vision. And I want to reach out to all people in this community, even through online. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your personal savior, this is the time because Jesus is the only hope. Gospel is the only good news that can take you eternal life. Jesus died for you on the cross. How precious you are. How precious Jesus and his blood is. And he rose again from the dead. This world is not our home. We have our citizenship in heaven. And we live every day with hope. And as, as John says that we can have, we have the victory, the bigger victory, but we live every day in the smaller and bigger victories of life every day. Hallelujah. God bless you. Now I'll hand over to uh, 